All right, so I've now made two videos complaining about Tears of the Kingdom's story, and there's no doubt, this story is flawed. Not to an extent where it's unenjoyable, but to an extent where there's a few things I would have done differently. Now I've talked about what these things are in the game, but that probably begs the question, how would I do it? Well, for all the complaining I've done, I might as well put my money where my mouth is and actually talk about what I would have done for this game's plot. This was probably the most challenging video subject I've done so far, as I really got to see what it's like to craft a story for a game like this. Even with the basis already done, I still had a convoluted note sheet, planned out different plot points, scrapped others when I realized they didn't work, and just made sure everything flowed together while also not being too overly complicated. When I started this, I wanted to make my ideal version of this game's plot while changing as little as possible out of respect for the devs, but I ended up changing a bit more than I planned to. Sorry devs. But in any case, if you saw my other videos, you've probably been waiting for this. Here is my personal version of Tears of the Kingdom story. We begin where most stories do, at the beginning. This whole sequence plays out pretty similar to how we see in the games, though the murals are changed slightly to reflect the changes that you'll see later in this video. Ganondorf's awakening has also changed slightly. Instead of consciously shooting up energy for no reason, instead just the seal coming undone is enough to release that energy immediately. And while the ground rumbles, the floor doesn't collapse immediately. Then Ganondorf opens his mouth. <sighs> the Master Sword. It appears time has dulled its edges even more than I thought. What a shame that Raru placed so much faith in you. Words cannot begin to express my disappointment. Ganondorf then summons his Demon King's bow and fires a shot at Link, but before it can reach its target, Zelda cries out in fear and holds up her hand as the recall ability is activated, sending the arrow flying back at Ganondorf. He easily dodges, but his gaze is shifted to Zelda, his eyes widening. At first, Zelda is confused about what just happened, but then gasps as she notices the back of her hand shining a golden light. Ganondorf sees this and smiles. Even after millennia, we're still drawn together, aren't we, Princess Zelda? Zelda gasps, demanding to know how he knows who she is. Ganondorf just chuckles. It doesn't matter. All that matters is after all this time, you're mine! Ganondorf lunges at Zelda, but barely has time to take a single cracky step before the cave rumbles and the ground starts collapsing. Ganondorf looks down in horror. He continues running, or whatever motion his mummified body is capable of, towards Zelda, but the ground underneath him collapses before that can happen and instead of him just casually accepting his fall, he instead falls into the darkness screaming in fury. Zelda takes a moment to question what just happened, but is soon snapped from her curiosity when she remembers Link's condition. She runs toward him before the ground collapses beneath her as well, and what we see next perfectly mirrors what we see in the game. They both fall, Zelda vanishes in a flash of light, Link is grabbed by the arm, and is pulled into the sky. Not a ton of changes, but enough that you can tell that this is going to be different, and hopefully it'll set up for some other stuff I have planned. Link wakes up on the Great Sky Island in the same manner he does in the actual game, and pretty much everything about the intro sequence of exploring the island is unchanged. By the way, 
Raru still has his Tears of the Kingdom design. Yeah, in complaining session number one, I mentioned I was kind of upset that this wasn't the Raru from Ocarina of Time, but I just like this Raru's design way better. So from now on, this is Raru. But anyway, everything is unchanged until the Temple of Time is opened. Whereas before the construct said Zelda was waiting there, this time he's actually correct. When Link opens the door, he finds Zelda in the middle of taking the secret stone in the middle of the room. When Link notices this, the spirit of Raru comes forth and sneers at her to put the stone back. Zelda gasps and whirls around, and she smiles and hugs Link when she sees that he's okay. And while she's saddened by the loss of Link's arm, she also expresses some level of interest in how his new arm functions. When she's done with that, she addresses the spirit of Raru, who's calmed down somewhat, but still has his eyes narrowed, asking her if she has any idea what she just took. A voice responds with yes, right before the spirit of Sonya manifests next to Zelda. Raru gasps upon seeing her, and is so in shock that he has trouble getting words out. Sonya addresses her husband with a smile, saying that she's missed him too, and while she'd love to catch up, they both know they don't have time, and gestures Zelda to Link. Knowing what to do, Zelda takes Link's new hand in her own and gives him the recall ability. She then apologizes to Link, saying she wishes that she can explain, but that it's dangerous for her to stay in the same spot for long. As a final act, she takes the Pura Pad and marks 11 locations on the map, telling Link that he can find her at these locations if he wants to know more. She then bids Link goodbye and disappears in a flash of light along with Sonya. After they disappear, Raru was still visibly distraught to see his wife disappear right in front of him, but manages to pull himself together and directs Link to the final shrine on the island. After completing it, Link returns to the Temple of Time and retrieves a heart container. But this time, not only is some of the corruption driven from his body, some of it is also driven from the Master Sword, increasing its damage output slightly. Link then opens the back door and is about to dive to the surface, but Raru stops him, saying that from this point on, his spirit has grown too weak to communicate with Link directly. But as long as Link has his arm, he'll always be with him. He then wishes Link goodbye, and Link dives towards the surface. Now before I go any further, you probably noticed a couple major changes here. One, that Zelda wasn't sent back in time, and two, the Master Sword wasn't sent back in time. I've decided to forego these things for a couple reasons. One, the idea of Zelda charging the Master Sword with sacred power for thousands of years is really cool, but unfortunately, it's ruined by the fact that the Master Sword still breaks, or runs out of energy, after a couple dozen hits. Seriously, millennia of sacred power used up in about three minutes. So what's the point? I also wasn't a massive fan of Zelda having another completely distant role in this game, so I would have given her more opportunities to directly interact with Link while maintaining an air of that mysterious role she had in Breath of the Wild. Two, while I do love how it goes in the game, I think said game could have used a fresh new Link Master Sword relationship where instead of pulling it out halfway through, you go on a journey with the Master Sword from the beginning, getting the chance to bond with it and making it feel like your weapon, which goes well with the idea of the fuse ability, making some random old weapon your own. So in this version, I'd make it so that with every heart container and stamina vessel, the Master Sword restores a little bit of its power, growing alongside Link. Let me know which version of this you prefer, this version or the game's version. Okay, sorry to keep you waiting, but just talking about the intro to this game took me way longer than I thought, and while I always planned to make this a multi-parter, talking about the regional phenomena in addition to this would result in a way longer video than I anticipated. So for now, it seems logical to break here, as at this point, the regional phenomena deserve a video of their own. Let me know if you have any theories or ideas about where I'm going with this. I hope to get to work on part two as soon as I can. So until then, peace out.